Hi everyone, it's Vicky here and welcome back to another card making video. Today I'm showcasing products from the latest release by Simon Says Stamp and this is actually part of a blog hop as we celebrate the new release. Make sure to join us as you will find lots of inspiration and many giveaways. I will mainly work with my favorite stamp set for the, from the whole release and this is the Spring Gnomes. It features three different gnomes. They are absolutely adorable. I will be using each and every one of them for my three cards today. Along with those uh, uh, stamps, I will also try and incorporate many of the new products from the new release so you can see them in action. So I will start by stamping all three of them. And I will be working on my Misty for that. I'm using an alcohol friendly black ink. This one is by My Favorite Things. So that I can stamp them and then use my alcohol markers to color everything. Now this stamp set is perfect for both Easter cards as well as Spring cards. So one of uh, the gnomes has bunny ears but the other two are perfect for just spring cards. So one of them is holding a little bird and the other one has uh, lots of uh, flowers on her hat. I am going to use my Nouveau markers. These are alcohol markers by Tonic Studios and I'm going to add color to all of these gnomes. I'm not going to show you how I colored each and every one of them. You can have lots of fun with these gnomes, coloring them in different color combos and with different mediums for completely different looks. And here they are, all colored. There are matching dies to cut them out. I don't have them in my craft room, so I'm going to use the good old scissors and go all around them. As I'm going to cut them, I will leave a white border. They are pretty easy shapes to cut out. And then I will use each and every one of those gnomes as a focal point on a different card. For my first card, I will use this adorable one with the bunny ears and I'm going to combine it with another product from the new release. With this egg, there are two dies in the set, the one that gives you all the detail with the happy Easter on top and the other one that cuts out the basic shape of the egg. I'm going to combine both of them on a piece of uh, cardstock and uh, as you can see, I placed one inside the other and I do have a stitched rectangle die all around just to have a lovely detail on the edges. I'm gonna run it through my die cutting machine and here is the outcome. Now it's been a while since I made a shaker card so I am going for a shaker card today which is one of those uh, interactive cards that I absolutely love. You see here I'm being very careful as I remove the um, washi tape just to make sure that I don't make any boo-boos on my card and here are all the different parts that I end up with. Now I'm going to put my card together and for that I need to create a background. My basic card is 4 and a quarter by 5 and a half while the one with the egg window is slightly smaller. So I'm just going to use some washi tape that I had on hand here and I'm going to cover up the edges so that I don't ink them up. And then I'm going to use my Distress Oxide inks in a lovely color combo. This is one of my favorite color combos when it comes to those inks. And that's worn lipstick and spiced marmalade. I am applying them with my good old blending tools just because these are uh, going um, to apply Distress Oxide ink quite saturated and that's what I'm going for today. So I'm going to blend them together. They blend beautifully these colors. Checking out if I have covered everything. And then I'm going to add some splashes just because I love them. The water reacts with ink. I'm going to leave it for a few seconds and then I'm going to blot it with some clean paper and you can see all the splashes coming through. I just love this look. Now I'm going to go ahead and put my shaker card together so I will use some uh, double-sided tape at the back of the egg. Then I'm going to peel off the backing and stick on top a piece of acetate that I have. You can use any packaging acetate, it would work beautifully for that. I tend to keep all the packaging in a drawer so that I can use it. And that's exactly what that is. Now my egg window is ready. I am going to stick this on top. And for that I will use my liquid glue. I'm using Nouveau Deluxe here and I just add tiny little dots here and there. It doesn't have to be everywhere, it's going to stick nicely. And uh, you can use for that a spray adhesive if you like. 
Or you can cover your cardstock before you die cut it with double sided adhesive so when you cut out this shape you can peel off the backing and it is a sticker. But I always forget to do that before I do my die cutting so that's the easiest way for me. It looks so pretty and it would make a great cut just by using this egg die. Now at the back I'm going to cover it up with uh, foam tape just to create the pockets where I will add later on my shaker elements. Now I have a jar of confetti. These are iridescent flowers. They are absolutely stunning. And they are by Studio Katia. I am going to link them down below. I'm using my nouveau handy spoon to apply them directly on my card. And then I have already peeled off the packing from my foam tip and I'm going to stick the panel directly on top. It is a beautiful Easter card as it is and think of all the variations with color combos that you can do. But I'm going to take it a step further and I'm going to stick that bunny gnome on top. I'm using my white gel pen. This is a Uniball Signo white gel pen. And I'm just adding some highlights here and there. And as I was playing with my white gel pen, I couldn't help myself. I had to add some polka dots on my gnome. So you can see here some close-up photos. Super adorable and really fun to create. Now let's move on to the second card and for this one I'm starting with the background since I already have my gnome colored and cut out. For that I'm working on a white cardstock which is slightly smaller than the standard card and I'm applying with my blending brush some ink. This is uh, tumbled glass. I mainly applied it at the top and I wasn't going for the perfect look. I want this to be my sky so some variation on color is good. It's going to look like highlights and clouds on my sky. And now I'm going to use this layering stamp set. These are the layered tulips. You get only two layers for each one of those uh, stamps. So one, two layers for the grass and two layers for the tulips. Pretty easy and it creates a beautiful look. I'm going to start with the grass. And for that I'm using uh, Alta New inks. This is bamboo. And then I have uh, aligned on top the second layer and this time I'm using Parrot. Now I absolutely love how dark shades go on top of layered stamp sets. So I'm going to stamp one more time just to get a darker shade on my grass. Now you can layer the tulips in between those grasses. They have empty spaces there. It's really easy to uh, align them and it is a very forgiving layering stamp. Now this is the first time I'm using these tulips. They are quite solid. That's why I'm just preparing them with my hands. Once they look quite foggy, they are good to go. And then I'm going to stamp the first layer. This time I'm using coral berry. And think of all the beautiful tulips with different color combos that you can create. It's a lovely background for spring, perfect for birthdays and pretty much for any occasion. Now I'm going to lay on top the second layer. Again, pretty easy to align. I'm going to close the door and this time I'm stamping with a darker shade, which is ruby red. The moment you stamp the second layer, you see how the tulips come to life. And again, just because I love the, that difference in color, I'm going to stamp it one more time to make it slightly darker. I'm really happy with my background. This is perfect for my spring gnome. So again, I'm going to use one of my stitched rectangle dies. Try to align it. This is going to cut it out to be slightly smaller than my standard card. So I will end up having a white border. And at the same time, it's going to give a lovely stitching. I added foam tape at the back of my sentiment. It says spring greetings. I just stamped that with black ink and it is one of the sentiments from the spring gnome set. So this panel is going directly on top of my card base with foam tape at the back and again I'm going to pop the gnome on top. I love how the tulips are quite um, tall in comparison with the gnome so it looks even smaller. I am going to add some highlights with my white gel pen. Since I had it on my table from my previous card, sometimes I cannot help myself with my white gel pen and the highlights. And I'm going to add some uh, shine on my card just to make it extra special. 
For that, I'm going to use some uh, gems. These are a mix from uh, Pink Fresh Studio, and I'm going to add some dots on all my tulips just to add a sparkle on each and every one of them. For sticking them down, I'm using uh, little dots of white glue from my Nouveau Deluxe glue, and that little uh, pencil that I am holding that picks up uh, those gems is a Studio Katia embellishment wand. It's really handy to work with and it's also very pretty. So I'm going to call my second card done. I think it is lovely and it would make a great birthday card for a spring birthday. And let's move on to the last card for today. This time I will be using a lovely die. This is called Happy Birthday and it gives you both the actual words as well as the outline. I have cut out the outline from my yellow cardstock. I tried to look through my stash to find a yellow cardstock that matches the color of my gnome's outfit. And then I cut out the, word ha the words Happy Birthday out of white cardstock and I'm going to stick one on top of the other. And here are some reasons why I keep on using my Nouveau Deluxe. I love how fine the tip is. I like that when it dries out, it doesn't show, it uh, completely disappears. And also, it never clogs on me. So anyway, I have a panel here that I cut out with a, a rectangle die. And this is going to be a window card this time, not a shaker card, but you can easily turn it into one if you like. I'm going to add some sky at the background making sure that I cover up completely the back of this window. And again, since this can be a sky, it doesn't have to be perfect. If you have some imperfections, they look like highlights and, and the clouds. But for this card, I have actually cut out a little cloud. I had a die in my stash, so I used this one. Now I'm going to stick this panel directly on top of my card base, and I have foam tape at the back for some dimension. I tucked my gnome inside the window, but some of the details, like his hat, are coming out of the window. I always have to, I love to have windows with things coming out of them. So I have used some uh, dies that cut out uh, leaves from my stash just to embellish my gnome a little bit and to create a lovely scene. Now I'm adding bits and pieces from uh, my foam tape at the back of my sentiment so that I can pop it on top of my card. And you can embellish your card even more if you like uh, tiny little flowers, you can stick them down around the gnome to make it even more whimsical. I'm going to leave it as it is, but I do have to add my white uh, highlights since I did the same detail on the rest of my cards. So here are some close-up photos on the last card for today with my yellow gnome. So now let's take a look on all the three Spring Gnome cards that I made using products from the latest release by Simon Says Stamp. Don't forget this is part of a blog hop, make sure to visit my blog, you will find lots of inspiration along the blog hop and many giveaways. Thank you all so much for visiting today, I hope you had fun, that you got inspired and I'll see you all next time.